The pain is still fresh outside the kosher supermarket, where one of the gunmen killed four Jewish hostages on Friday. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu came to pay tribute to the victims, who died in a hail of bullets as the hunt for the terrorists came to a dramatic close. Heavily armed soldiers are taking position outside Jewish schools, like this one in Paris. It's a site the students will have to get used to, after the government announced the biggest increase in security on home soil in modern French history, including 5,000 troops at religious schools and places of worship. We have decided with the chief of staff to mobilize 10,000 troops who will be protecting vulnerable areas across the country from tomorrow evening. Many in the capital say they refuse to give in to fear. Je suis Charlie, I am Charlie, has become the national rallying cry, which mobilized nearly four million people across the country on Sunday to stand up for free speech. Around 1.5 million united in Paris alone. What a proud moment it was to be French at that rally. What struck me the most was the silence over Paris. Moments like this, thousands holding up pencils, which have become a symbol of free speech, the very thing that cost Charlie Hebdo's satirists their lives. Or this emotional meeting between the French president and the victims' families. For one day, the whole world united in solidarity with France. Landmarks from New York to London were bathed in the colors of the French flag. In Australia, hundreds of people gathered here in Sydney, itself the recent scene of a deadly terrorist attack. In Berlin, nearly 20,000 people paid their respects outside the French embassy. And in Cairo, journalists also stood up for freedom of speech something many of them can only dream of here in their own home country. As France reels from the shock of the attack, many are now looking to the government to devise policies that will unite, rather than divide, the country in a national time of mourning.